Uh, let's bring up to the stage uh, yes. director Jillian Jones. What was your uh, introduction to uh, Leonardo da Vinci, and then why, why, why present in this particular way and in three dimension? Um, well, my introduction to this film came from Julian and Peter over here, who th these are the guys that came up with the idea of doing Leonardo in 3D in the first place. And then they kind of handed it off to me at that point. Um, and I was a complete layperson um, in terms of 3D and his notebooks. And the idea was to bring Leonardo's notebooks to life in 3D. But I think like most people, if I thought about Leonardo's notebooks, I thought, okay, Vitruvian Man, uh, anatomy, equestrian drawings, and so on. Um, I probably would have thought, yeah, there's the odd quote from Leonardo in there as well. But it was only when we started looking, um, uh, when I started looking at, at the notebooks, I realized, wow, th these, th these are about not just his ideas and obsessions, but they're about him. And so if we start looking uh, at his work, we can start to kind of understand a lot about him. And for me, the words became much more interesting than, than the images at that point. E every, every word in that film... Um, obviously, his. we've translated it, uh, yeah. but he spoke every single word. We didn't put a single word into his mouth at right. all. So, it, you know, it's it's all him. And we worked. Um, factual accuracy was very important to us, and we worked with um, uh, Professor Martin Kemp from Oxford University to make sure that that it was yeah, very accurate. Is it Peter Capaldi? Is that the actor? He's the only one in the film, of course. Uh, I mean, that's obvious. But what uh, uh, made me feel he was very lonely on some level, on an emotional level. I felt emotionally connected with him. You know, he was uh, a real raconteur and a very kind of outgoing person as well. But I think, okay. you know, kind of emotionally, he probably would have been quite lonely. He wasn't part of the kind of academic elite of the, of the time, you know, so he, he felt like an outsider from that world. Um, also, you know, the question of his sexuality may have made him feel like more of an outsider sure. because you know that was not something that was uh, particularly welcomed um, and also you know he was quite clearly the smartest guy in the room <laughs> and I think yeah. he probably even tonight maybe I don't know you know yeah <laughs> so I think that would have probably heightened his sense of being an outsider um, and he had you know as, as, as the film shows this obsession with just about everything that was ultimately kind of quite overwhelming for him I hope because the things he's talking about are timeless. You know, he's talking about nature and he's talking about man. Um, and we didn't set out to make a film um, that was a historical reconstruction. Because if you like, there's kind of nothing to reconstruct because these are words in a diary. So for the same reason, you know, we don't have Leonardo with a, a wig or a quill or, you know, we're not trying to recreate a moment in time. These are kind of, uh, these are moments that didn't happen. They're thoughts in a, in a journal. Um, uh, and it felt to me that, that a lot of the things he's talking about um, uh, are still relevant. They're still kind of resonant. Yeah, he yeah. was a painter, but for, right. for him, his painting was kind of his day job. I see. What he was really into was his journals. Sure. But none of his observations were published. You know, And that's an interesting question. If people had seen his work I see. then, what would have happened in, in you know, the history of science and, and so on? Well, he didn't speak Latin. Um, and you know, Latin was, you know, the Renaissance, and everything was written in Latin. He didn't speak Latin. I think you know he taught himself to speak Latin. So he, you know, he w he was certainly outside of, of of the great thinkers of the time that he aspired to be. Yeah, his relationship with his parents. The question that was about. Yeah, he 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 was raised by his mother. I think his his mother was you know a peasant girl essentially, and his father was uh, a uh, a clerk. Was he a clerk? A notary, uh, and he was older, and he lived in Florence. So I think he did have intermittent contact with his father, more so when he went to live in Florence later on. His father did help him out financially, so that so there was a relationship there, um, but certainly not in his kind of younger, more formative years. Uh, no, 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 about no, his sexuality. Yes, yeah, no, no, no one knows whether he was for whether certain. He was gay. You know, he never says so, um, and so we so never say so. I mean, I think you know. My understanding is that you know academics believe he was but may have been you know none practicing um but no i didn't read any freud <laughs> first part is how did you choose which parts of his writing to put into the film and secondly how do you make it cin cinematic um well there was you know obviously an, an enormous amount of research went on but we also had a consultant from oxford university and uh, Peter and I spent a lot, uh, 
many afternoons sat with him trying to flesh out what we thought Leonardo's personality was and what were the, ma the major moments in his life. Um, so once we kind of sketched that out, we were able to start cherry picking um, material to kind of to f to, 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 to fit that storyline. But we did read a lot. Um, and, you know, I'm credited as being a writer, but what I kind of did was assemble lots of things and kind of lay them out. Mm -hmm. And then we had a wonderful um, playwright uh, called Nick Deer, who then, uh, uh, not translated, we, we had translations, but I think the most translations were done in sort of the late 19th century in the kind of, the fashion then was to make everything sound very Shakespearean. So it was actually <laughs> harder to more understand than the original Italian. Um, so Nick Deer just turned Find it into the right a colloquial language. I see. Yeah. And, but that was that was a tricky thing because we didn't want him to sort of sound like, you know, he's down with the kids in 2012 or something. <laughs> we didn't right. want him to sound too antiquated Somewhere. either. But I think we found you know a, a, a nice balance. What's going to yeah. happen? Is it going to be on the History Channels? Hope so. History Channel. Um, Julian, can we get answer? Yes. Well, we're hoping for it's going to have a small theatrical release in New York and LA in the spring, and hopefully, if it catches on, spread out from there, and ultimately, we'll be on History Channel within the next uh, year and a half. So. Because so of the three d dimensional, uh, three dimensional aspect of it, we don't yeah, want to go. Hoping to hopefully, people enjoy seeing it in this environment, which is you know how it's best made to be enjoyed. You know, as opposed right. to a small street scene at home. Well, I think, as I, I said at the beginning, and, and initially, we were going to make a film that was probably more slanted towards bringing Leonardo's uh, notebooks to life, you know, bringing his inventions and so on to life more. But for me, once we kind of got into the words and we got Peter Capaldi involved, then I wanted to treat it more like a piece of theatre at that point and to kind of create something that felt like an immersive, an audience with Leonardo, essentially. And I think... Um, you Leonardo, know, one-man show on Broadway, that kind of thing. Yeah, essentially, it, it, it is kind of a one-man show with pictures. I think you know that that's that's kind of <coughs> how I designed it. And you notice there's not there's only 150 cuts or something in 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 the whole film. So we did a lot of long takes, and the idea was to to have it feel some somewhat kind of theatrical. And clearly, when you thought about what he was the prototype, there was thought and talk with Peter about him being the prototype of 3D. He was all about. Mm -hmm. motion and movement and it seemed now really? that a cinematic technology has caught up with his original artistic vision and this is the right this was the right medium to present this material there was also a sense in which obviously he constructed something in 2d but what he was looking at was in 3d so the juxtaposition of 2d imagery with 3d reality felt like it was a very powerful combination and i think as julian says the third element was this notion of theatricality and to, to create a feeling you could be with this person in this room and to keep the simplicity of that experience. Um, and having seen it in 2D, I have to say it's so much better when you see Peter Capaldi in 3D. You genuinely <laughs> feel you're in the room with him. And I think the simplicity of that actually really, really worked. So it's a combination of 2D imagery, 3D reality, and a theatrical experience. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. And thank you for this, this special, innovative uh, search uh, look at uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Thank you, Julian.